So I'll start my story from uh, where I started and uh, what was the motivation behind this. So this is where my school is situated. So this is an island of 42 villages and this is known as Bailis Moja. Island of 42 villages. And in this 42 village, there is a village named Barad. That is my own village. And I was a rural guy studying in this uh, school, uh, rural school. Uh, up to class 5th and only because of education. Uh, what my father did is, he was in CRPF. So we got transferred from this uh, village to Bhopal. Only because of education. We migrated. And I did my schooling. During my schooling years, uh, I was very much interested in innovation, technology, making something. So this is me when I was in class 6 and I got uh, awarded for one of the city planning. Okay, so my father was in CRPF, so I was a kid, I got uh, the award. So this, is my, this, was, this was my first achievement from where I came to know that I can also do something. And when I got migrated from this rural village to Bhopal, the main problem with me was, I was very bad at communication. I was very bad at English. So I didn't get admission in a very good school at Bhopal. It took me two years only to crack and interview to get into a uh, very good English medium school. Then, uh, like uh, when I went, uh, when I was in tenth, and you are very good at maths and science. So what your father do is, you try for this three-letter word I I F T. So I was into that. I was into the rat race of I I T. And uh, for fortunately and or unfortunately, I didn't crack it. And this is where the problem lies. When we compare the acceptance ratio of IIT with MIT, IIT is India's best technical institute. And we, when we compare with MIT, world's best technical institute, the success rate of getting into IIT is only 1% and success rate of getting into MIT is 8%. And this IIT is not in top 100 QS ranking. So from here I got the knowledge that something is very wrong with our education system in India. We are pushing our students into a rat race and after that what he is getting is not the best in the world. So when I was in engineering, I uh, unfortunately or unfortunately I didn't get IIT, but I got the best state government college in Odisha, that is UC Burla. And I started experimenting my stuff. So this is me welding. Uh, I got various awards. But the important thing was, I was into programming, I was into electronics, I was into rocket designing, I was into satellite designing, I was into welding, know that stuff. And you guess what was my uh, branch. You couldn't guess it. It's civil engineering. Okay. So that's the best part. And I got a bag in my structural engineering paper. So structural engineering is steel structural engineering paper. And uh, my uh, faculty told me, Anil, you got a bag this in this in this subject. We're not studying it. After two months, what happened is I did one project and I was awarded by Tata. And I got this award. And I told so this is what I did. This is a real life project that I did and I was successful in that. So will you judge, judge me with this mark sheet or with this certificate? Then what happened is, uh, when I was in engineering, I thought of, why not solve this problem? Everyone is talking about, we don't have a very good education system, that after 50 years of independence, the education system is the same. But why not we are trying to make it happen? Why not try to change it? Let's rule an So the Biggest problem was, who is the first one to start this kind of thing? We Indians have one problem. The biggest problem is, we all want to dive into the sea. But who is the first one to dive into the sea and see whether there are sharks or not? And once that one guy said, okay, it's a thumbs up, no sharks here, then we all can dive. So I was the first guy who told that I'll start this kind of school. And then you will ask, what is, 
what kind of experiment do you do? What is the difference in your school? So I'll ask, what is this? Many of you will say 40, many of you will say M. So this is the basic essence of education. We have to tell our teachers, we have to tell our students, just think it out. And this is the environment that I am creating. Now if I ask, what is this? Now it's confirmed, it's M. It's about the environment that I am giving you. So this is my formula, triple E. Environment and experiment will give you an experience. So this is how my experiential learning works. Then this is my curriculum. What I what I have changed in the curriculum is I am giving 50% of weightage to the experimental learning part and 20% to the skill and technology part and 30% on content. Content learning is the road learning process that you are doing in your schools and colleges. So this is the tab based learning that I have implemented. So what we have done is we have provided students with tablets and they have their own content in these tablets and they can access it. So if you ask, sir, what you did for this pre-nursery students? They can't be taught what is innovation, they can't be taught with what is science, technology. So what I told them is, I have just changed the method by which you are learning. Okay. So if the main problem, if, if you have a kid, a 3 year old or a 5 year old kid, the main biggest problem with them is they have very bad handwriting and we don't have any solution for that. So what I did is, I, I gave my students a needle and a thread and I told, just put the thread in this needle. So there are n number of permutation and combination. You can use these two fingers, you can use these three fingers, these four fingers, any permutation and combination. But the easiest way how you can put this thread in the middle is by using only these two fingers. So this is an experiment in my school. This experiment, students, I used to give them 10 minutes every day. They do this experiment. And then I don't make them understand what is force, what is pressure. This is the way how you have to hold pencil. After this kind of experiment, they easily come to know how you have to hold the pencil. Then this is experiential learning. Learning outside the four walls of classroom. If the problem is outside the four walls of classroom, then you have to move to the problem. Not to just sit idle inside the classroom and walk. So this is what we do. Then to develop the skill and technology, we have n number of uh, laboratories. First is Port Ford Jode Lab. Okay. So this is one of the best lab where students come down, they dismantle uh, all the equipments that we have in our 8, 9, 10, 10 uh, subjects. For example, many of you must be knowing how the model works. They can also write down a paragraph and they can get 10 out of 10 marks in their boards. But how many of you really know how a model works and how actually the minding is inside? Unless and until we inculcate these kind of abilities in our students, I don't think that we can fix the education problem. So this is the lab where you can fix this. Then there is a Zorka Jatka lab. So this is actually an electronics laboratory that I have implemented for my students where they can come and they can tinker around with the electronics equipments. Third one is a design innovation lab. So in this design innovation lab what I did is uh, I, I gave them 3D printers, CNC machines and they can tinker around and they can make any stuff. If they have anything in their mind they can design things and then they can come down to this lab. Then we have Kabards and Jugal lab. So this lab is very interesting because uh, climate change is the hottest topic on earth now. And everyone is uh, uh, like talking about climate change and we have to do something for the climate. And we have a lot of debates and we have a lot of competitions, painting competitions, all that stuff. But when it comes to the action, we don't do anything, not even our schools. So what I did is, these kind of initiatives we have implemented in our own school. So this is a lab where they can actually see how recycling can be done. And we are a zero waste school, so we don't have anything to throw out. Then this is a robotics lab, like any other robotics lab, we have the same lab. This is a hydro lab. So you can see students, rural students working on rural problems. Okay, so students, they are working in the Katajodi river near Katak. So they are actually designing something 
that can be used to scavenge the plastic out from the universe. Then this is a project prototype. So you can actually see students working on prototypes. They are actually working on real life problems to make that happen. Then my students, this is the recent activity they did. And in this they are making furniture out of old tires. And these furniture are further used in their own learning spaces. These are the learning spaces that we have created. And these are fully made by our students. Then this is a 3D printing facility. This is the project prototyping thing. Then they have lot of project prototyping related to like uh, hydroponics, soilless farming, aquaponics and all that. <laughs> then say you are a little guy and you started a school. It's not that easy that you are telling. So how this all happened? It, it happened because of these three things. The first thing is the funds. Second was the partnership thing. And the third one is the idea behind. Okay. So for funds, what, what I the great help was if you do anything good for the people, if you have the right intention and you have to make a positive impact in the society, then people will come up. They will they may take time, but at the end they will come up. So my college alumnus came up, Lord of Alumni came and they told, Yeah, we'll help you. We'll make this happen. We'll make this kind of school in Odisha. And that, that was my first school in Bodhis Puja. Now we are coming with, with, with a new school in Odisha and with a capacity of 10,000 students. Then, then about partnership, uh, when I was a kid, I was rejected by various organizations, including the IIT. So now IIT is one of my partners working towards this project. Then, these are the students from IIT Delhi who came down to my uh, village and they are now working on how can we make this sustainable, how can we design the complete curriculum and all that. This is, you can see students from other colleges like VSSP Burla and other government colleges coming down to the place and working on how this curriculum can be patented and this curriculum can be spread across other government schools in Odisha. This is the design thinking, this is it. So the thing is, what next? So you did it in a single village. What is what you will do for the whole country? Can it be replicated? So the answer is yes. The thing is, what we are doing is very simple. If we have a solution of changing and making the education system a better thing, then why not go for it? We at the policy making thing. We all have one, that one thing that, yes, our education system is not good. This need to be changed, this need to be revolutionized. But when and how? There are three kinds of people. I say there are three kinds of people. The first is people who are immortal. These are only 20% of people. And there are second type of people who will tend to work on the direction with the direction of the wind. They will flow with the direction of the wind. And they, there are less than 20%, those are movable, who will drive the thing. So if these 20% people who can drive the thing will come, join hands and make a positive revolution, then this rest 80% will also join. And then we can think about revolutionize like things. So it's about revolution in the education system. It's about each and every one of us. If each and every one of us will make this thing happen, that yes, we have to do and we will do, then I think we will do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.